Hello and welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we'll look at another small ship that utilizes the saddle cockpit in the latest DLC pack. And this thing sitting right beside me is called the Drake Dragonfly Jet Bike, which is this lovely thing that I originally thought was modded due to the way the armored panels at the front were all positioned. But no, this is a very fancy jet bike that only uses atmospheric thrusters. We've got two auto cannons for defense, and we even have an ore detector, so we can go out and about and scaffold ore patches if we need to. If I look down at it, that's how it's all been set up. Now each of the four rectangles that attach onto the middle of the ship, they are all statically connected, so there's no hinges on this, there's no rotors or anything like that, so it's all fine, except for the auto cannons. They are on rotors, and you can move them around if you want to. But yes, pressing F10 and finding this in the spawn menu, the Dragonfly is 858 small blocks using the Wasteland, Sparks of the Future, Warfare 2, Heavy Industry, Warfare 1, and I think that's pretty much it. I'm not too sure why it hasn't loaded the rest, but here is the information on the Steam Workshop page. So let's simply give this a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, we'll have a quick look around the outside, and then we'll go and test out, see what it can do, and I think that'll be that. My character can now bugger off just a little bit, there we go, and this is what we get at the very front for the Drake Dragonfly Jet Hike. So on the left and right hand side, what we got is some lovely grey corrugated steel blocks with an interior light on the front. If we were to move along in the middle and go towards our saddle cockpit, what we're going to see is a bunch of batteries to give it a bit of power, and then one hell of a lot of atmospheric thrusters to give us off the ground, move us backwards, and move us left and right. Below our cockpit we do have an antenna so we can always find this thing, and as we were to move all the way up, there's another spotlight to light up the darkness, and there's our two auto cannons to blast your enemies with. Like I said a minute ago, they are on rotors, so we can lift them up and down, but there is no proper way of controlling these without going into the control menu and it doing it manually. If we pull away from this and look at it on the side, there we go. So we have a drake written on the side in some lovely black letterings. Then across the bottom of this section, we've got some hazard skin just for a bit of decoration. As we move along the side, there's some more atmospheric thrusters for our left and right, with some blast or edge blocks on top. Over to this section, this is where our saddle cockpit is sitting, as well as a reactor, which is in a very precarious position. Yes, it's just there for some additional power, and you can always cover up some armored panels if you want to. If you were to get a bit closer, we do have a neon tube, just as a step up and into the cockpit. And as we move away from there, we can see some more atmospheric thrusters to push us around. Then over onto this back rectangle, we do have an access panel, where we can play around with a control panel if we need to. Moving all the way around, there's some more atmospheric thrusters, there's some more interior lights with a red glow. Then at the back of the main body, we got ourselves an ore detector, an ejector, then two more atmospheric thrusters. If we were to move all the way up and look down at this thing, we can see all of our armored panels on the side. On the left hand side, instead of our axis panel, we've got two piston heads. Then across over here, we've got ourselves a weapon container and another axis panel. Moving across to the middle, there is our saddle cockpit where we can see two more reactors. And all the way across to here, there's our auto cannons, there's our blaster edge blocks on top of some more atmospheric thrusters. There's a couple more piston heads, then we can see Drake written on the other side, is some black lettering. Moving all the way down and underneath this thing, if we can see past the grass, I have a feeling I'm going to lift this off off the ground. But now we can just about make that out, to our atmospheric thrusters push us up, and then not really too much else to talk about. We do have two magnet plates at the front to clamp ourselves down on, then at the back we can see two gyroscopes, and there is the glow of our red lights. And there we are. That's a brief look around the outside of the Drake Dragonfly jet bike. It looks bloody fantastic with how it's all been set up. And how it's sitting like this, it looks like it could be a hover tank and just ride around if you wanted to set that up. You simply put wheels on their sides and should be able to glide around quite nicely. But yes, now what I can do is just grab hold of my character. We don't have too much to go through. So what I will do is come across to this access panel at the back and we can just open this up. There we go. We now access anything in here. Do a little bit of role playing fiddle around for those switches, close it up, come across to this one, and there we go. Oh, it's not the one on the access panel, it's just the one with the wires. But still, a very nice block at the end of the day. Now we can come up into the saddle cockpit in first person view. This is all we can see. So looking around, surprisingly, we can't really see too much because of the screen in front of us. So what I'm going to do is come to third person view, undo the magnetic plates, and lift this off the ground. And here we go. So yes, the only control is for our auto cannons. We simply press that, then we can mouse click to shoot them straight forwards. And that's all the controls. If we were to come into the control panel, come into here, I'll just show you the two rotors. 
So on this one, there's rotor 1, rotor 2, and these are for the guns at the front. So if I was to say undo the rotor lock for both of these, there we go, and say to put the velocity all the way up, easier than moving around. And that's all they do. So for the moment, we just leave them like so. Yes, they'll shoot backwards if I was to hit the mouse. But we might be able to just shoot the floor with these. There we go. We now shoot anything slightly behind us and blow. But yes, it's going to be time to fly this thing around. So this thing is exceptionally heavy, more heavy than I was thinking, to the point it feels like a giant capital ship as I fly this thing around. Moving forwards and moving up so we can get a bit of clearance away from these trees. This is what we get. We are surprisingly slow and very, very heavy. Come to a stop, that is what we get. So it's not too bad at the end of the day compared to moving forwards, but you still want to be extra careful when heading along towards the ship or a base in case you slam into it. Moving left. And then moving right, as you can see, as this thing starts to slow down, is quite slow it to the point it starts to drift around, and that's going to be the dangerous point when you're trying to maneuver around a station or around another ship, so you'll probably end up clipping it and damaging both things. Moving up, we are exceptionally slow, and this is on the Earth-like planet. It'll probably do a little bit better on lighter gravity planets or on the moon. That's up to you where you use this. I probably wouldn't use this on, say, the alien planet, because it'll probably struggle to actually lift off off the ground. Yes, moving down to be gravity based and is the fastest thing out of everything. As for gyroscope controls, we'll have to wait for this to come to a stop. And just moving this thing around, it surprisingly got a nice amount of speed with this. Unlike moving forwards, backwards, left and right, it's not heavy in the slightest and pretty reasonable for this size of ship. Yes, it does sort of drag around just a little bit, so the controls are quite meaty, but at the end of the day, it's pretty damn good. So the only thing left to do with this thing is of course to slam it into the mountainside. So what we're going to do is get up to a nice high speed and just slam it into the nearest rock or any kind of outcropping. And here we go, we're about to hit mountainside. Looking all the way around it, it is a bloody fantastic setup, absolute gorgeous design with this thing. And it should make a giant hole in the mountainside. There we go, that's a nice lag spike. But surprisingly, no hole. If we look at the front of this thing, what have we lost? Not really too much. For a head-on collision at that speed, I was expecting a lot more. So this thing seems to be pretty good at crashing into stuff and surviving. As I was saying, it's an absolute fantastic design, extremely sleek and racer-like look. And you could get a lot of use out of this, especially if you do, like I said earlier, and turn it into a hover ship and just have it glide around on the ground. So that will help out greatly with the sheer driftiness of the controls. So yes, that is it for the Drake Dragonfly jet bike. There'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download and play around with it yourself. I highly recommend you do. I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.